I was taken aback by the number of national reporters that don't seem aware of Nico. And I also want to be introspective here and ask myself, am I too high on Nico being close to the situation? But John, I think it boils down to this. Is Nico just ultimately already a star? Only one start, one bowl game. But is he just kind of considered a given? And if that's the case, how big is that for Tennessee, John? Well, it's definitely big for Tennessee, but I, I think it is a given. I was talking to a friend of mine who's from uh, uh, does radio in Athens, Georgia, and he was talking to me about about Nico, and and he watched the bowl game, uh, and he'd seen Nico. I mean, he watches a lot of SEC football, and he says, you know, this guy. He's going to be something. I mean, he said this puts Tennessee at a different level. And that's an outsider. That's not someone that's close to the situation. He's very knowledgeable about college football, though. And I think anybody that watches Nico, if you just watch that bowl game, it wasn't the stats. You just watch the guy play. And you can look at him and say, man, why wasn't I mean, he's that good. I don't think it's, I don't think you're being close to the situation is uh, giving you a misconception of his ability. I think usually when somebody at a, that position, uh, may, a running back can do the same thing, maybe a receiver, but when you just see somebody and you think, if you watch a lot of football and you just see somebody like that, you think, man, this guy's, this guy's unusual. He's got special talents. It was just very obvious. And I think people thought that, not just me, people thought that when they saw him when he came in, in those, you know, in this very uh, scant uh, number of plays he had during the regular season. And he barely played, but you could just see, see him play, watch him throw the ball, watch him move around. He's just, he's just a really good player. So... John, I want to draw a comparison on that real quick because full disclosure, by the time I, you know, I was eight when I really kind of started just kind of watching college football. And that was the 96 season. And then I really started watching the 97 season. So Peyton Manning was already like a household name by that point. But let's go back to heading into 95 after Manning's freshman year. You know, he's about to be a sophomore. I know how the coaching staff hyped him up during the 97 season for the Heisman. But how would you compare the way the coaching staff hyped up Peyton Manning and in going into 95 versus how this one is? I would say not really hyping Nico up at all. It seems like they're keeping things very close to the vest. I almost think, John, playing along those lines, I almost think they think they've got a little bit of a secret. But, I mean, they don't, but coaches sometimes can be off base a little bit. <laughs> well, I, I don't know how they could have a secret. I mean, there's been so much written and so much said about this guy. He was a five-star recruit. Um, he, he's gotten quite an NIL deal. There is all kind of speculation about that. And then you've got some video on him now. No, I think if you go back even before last season, Josh Heupel was talking about, hey, if we had to turn the reins over to Nico, you know, we feel confident in that. He didn't do it, but he 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 brought that up. I look at it differently, uh, Caleb. I think they just know it's so obvious there's no point in even talking about it. They don't need to hype him because they're just That's convinced – Anybody that sees this guy, you know, it'd be like, you know, watching uh, any any great player. You don't have to say, boy, you know, that uh, Patrick Mahomes is, you know, the Chiefs might win it again. That guy's pretty good. He's not bad. Yeah, he's okay. He's I not think just a caretaker. But that, I that, Josh, that I think Josh Heifel's shovel got tired, Caleb. I think but last, that's why I wanted, he shoveled us all this quarterback info to serve his own narrative. He wasn't going to try it to say, oh, it's a real quarterback competition with Merklinger and Gaston Moore. No, but that's where I wanted to draw the comparison. That's why I wanted to draw to 95, because my understanding is that the coaches were going out of their way to make Peyton Manning a household name, weren't they, before his sophomore year? And but, but, pushing him as much as possible. Me. Yeah, excuse me, Caleb, but yeah, but see, Peyton Manning, again, kind of like Nico, 
came in with so much fanfare, e- even in 94, because, see, he started seven games in 94, and by the end of 94, he was a star. Now, uh, back then, I think it was different, too. I think they saw his him as a Heisman Trophy candidate, and I think, now there's so much there's so many games on TV. You don't see you don't really need a Heisman campaign anymore. There's no. so much you know everybody sees everybody. So I just think it was different back then. Um but yeah, they did promote him uh and the media relations department did promote him and it, it's not necessary to do that now. So uh, I don't think with Nico, I don't think they're trying to downplay anything. And if Josh Heupel really thinks he's he's going to send him out there for the first game and teams go, oh, where'd this guy come from? He, he might I be disappointed. Think, I don't think it's I, a secret weapon. No, I think there's a part of him, though, that wants to go hang about 375 yards in the first half against Chattanooga and kind of be like, look at what I've been working on, everybody. Yeah, and what's going to be the reaction of so many people? Why did this guy play last year? I know it's going to be Eisman or bust 2024, baby. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm calling that, so y'all can call me crazy, but I'm already there with Nico. So I, I, think, I think Josh Heupel put – when you talk about all chips in the table, he's put he's been preparing to put all of his chips in the table for the 2024 season. I'm not sure if that's smart. I don't know if that's wise, but that's how he's tooled his roster. And I think that's why Nico, I think, is if he's not insanely transcendently great this this year, then Tennessee's future may be in jeopardy with Josh Heupel. John. Wow. Uh, and you yes. know, Caleb, usually he doesn't deal in extremes, so that's kind of an odd <laughs> take for him. He's usually kind of, you know, a little bit cautious in what he says. So he'd come right. on that strong. I think it really makes an impression. But yes. I will say, uh, right. to piggyback off that, I will say that Tennessee's got him for two years, two more years, we figure, if he's as good well, as Well, if they can keep thinks. him a secret, though, they could get enough NIL money to keep him for five more, I think, is the number with the COVID year. Does that still count? Hell, yeah. Know. Yeah, well, he was he was born during COVID, so, it, yeah, it counts. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, that's a COVID year. If you yeah. were born during the have, COVID if, pandemic, you, yeah, if you, have you get all baby, those years. Yes, if you have the baby vaccination – you get the 18 years, so you could actually be 38 years old and still be playing college football. Yeah, and then you get a hardship <laughs> waiver. Uh, and then he'd be he'd be too old for the NFL, but Jimmy Haslam would still draft him on the Browns as his number one pick. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> or hire him as the lead masseuse. All right, John, you were seeing? I, I don't even remember what we were talking about. <laughs> Okay, so Nico. Okay, if Nico's but, already a star, what what do you define that as? Because I think that's what we're saying. He's already a no, star. So he's a. No, how do you define a star? No, yeah, I get what what I was getting ready to say is based on what Caleb said. Tennessee needs to make the playoffs with Nico at quarterback. I think that's significant. You need to make the playoffs with this guy at quarterback. Because I'm not sure the next quarterback you have will be as good as he is. So this is your window. Now, Tennessee didn't win a national championship. There was no playoff. Tennessee didn't win a national title with Peyton Manning at quarterback. So they won it with T. Martin. So you could say, well, they could still win one. That's right. But to me, in a 12-team playoff, this is a window of opportunity when you have Nico as quarterback. Uh, And another thing that Caleb says, that Josh Heupel is all in on this, in 24 uh give some examples of that caleb with with the roster why you think he's all in on 24 i think it was the way they went about nil this past off season where they did things like they you know they were rather than go try to get new talent in the portal they were thinking let's up the money to keep make sure we keep cooper mays and javante spragans and brew mccoy because the chemistry factor is there I think last year there were some – I think he was much more willing to work with a lot of newcomers that he put into the system last year in 2023, i.e. Dante Thornton and people like that. 
to try to see. I think he used a lot of 2023 with people like Dante Thornton specifically, and even John Campbell Jr. Um, on the line, almost as a, he was experimenting in the season to see where he could move guys around largely because I thought he knew he didn't, he knew he didn't have a national title caliber team last year, particularly given his quarterback. So I think can he I wasn't jump, a free. Can I jump on Caleb's yeah. bandwagon? Something that's a little bit more difficult to put a, a finger on. I think that they thought that the team's culture would continue to be really strong. If Joe Milton could make it through the year. And I don't think yes. they wanted to mess up 24 for maybe a win or two more in 23. That I know, John, that sounds bizarro to you, but I think that's something that was there. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, uh, I think coaches need to be more about winning than culture. You could say the two go together, but, you know, the best guys play. The players know who the best guy, the best players are. They know that better than anyone. If, if But – I don't want to dwell on the past. Tennessee won nine games, and uh, moving on past the Joe Milton era, as brief as it was. But it was something. Yeah. Will never be forgotten. It was, uh, yeah. It was. Yes. It was <laughs> and awful. also, the whole lot of lost lost. screens, wasn't it? The other Man, big part, did though. For... You see that throw? Go. I'm sorry, kid. <laughs> <laughs> what, totally is, what is Joe Milton? And a nine-foot doorway have in common. A lot of long screens. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'll just um, stay tuned because there's John, more of that to come, including. <laughs> well, the one, last, the, yes, the one last bit of evidence I wanted to give, too, is notice he, for two on. years, for three years, accepted the level of poor play from his secondary. And then this past December, he just shoved them all into the transfer portal and said, get out. <laughs> we need we need some guys now. I mean, he Josh Ivo legitimately did that. He let, for three years, his defensive backs be horrendous. And then he sent them all out the door this past year. I, I just don't think coaches – I think they want to seize the moment. I, I think they want to win every game they can. I, I just – I don't think there was some grand plan going on here. And then they're saying, oh, meanwhile, back in the laboratory, we're building a six foot six quarterback that will win the Heisman <laughs> Trophy. But we're going to keep him secret until we get to that Chattanooga game in 24 <laughs> and then show the world. 